Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Sonia and on this channel we talk about health, lifestyle and travel. Today we're talking chlamydia, a sexually transmitted infection or a sexually transmitted disease. In this clip I will be referring to chlamydia as a sexually transmitted infection or STI. If you are a male and you think, oh my goodness, this is a girl thing, it is not. Males and females both have chlamydia and this applies to everyone who is sexually active with different partners. So, and usually it's for those who are under 25 or for those who are changing partners regularly. So, listen up. And of course, as always, any of my references can be found in the description box below and you can go out and find out your own information as well because that's what this channel is about, valid, reliable information. So there are something like 20 different types of sexually transmitted infections or STIs and out of those 20 there are three different classes. You could say like flavours, three different flavours of STIs and the first one is parasitic and these are things like scabies and lice uh, or pubic lice and these can be treated so treatable. Number two is bacterial and these are things like chlamydia, gonorrhea and syphilis also treatable and thirdly the third one is viral infection and this is HIV it is um, herpes and HPV. Now HPV there is a vaccination for, for both males and females. Um, and also uh, if you don't have the vaccination and you're sexually active, then you are at risk of vaginal warts it causes and it does cause cancer as well. So with the viral infection, only the symptoms can be treated the actual viral infection cannot be cured. So HIV cannot be cured, but the symptoms can be managed, but you will never get rid of it. So this is the problem with sexually transmitted infections is that none of them are any good, but I guess the worst ones to get are the viral ones. And sometimes when you have something like chlamydia, uh, your infection rate is much higher in, in gaining HIV when you have chlamydia. So these in con combination with each other is not a good thing. So definitely looking after yourself and listening up and um, let's get into what is chlamydia. So chlamydia is a bacterium whose natural host is humans. It is called Chlamydia trachomatis. Did I say that right? I think so. So the infection rate of chlamydial infections has increased quite strikingly over the last 20 years and it is believed that it's because of um, you know the promotion of getting screening, getting people screened has um, upped those numbers as well as the better screening tools. As another study actually suggests that it is because of social apps where we can swipe and find people of the same uh, sexual preferences has led to this increase in STIs over the last 20 years. So it could be a combination of all three. How is it transmitted? Chlamydia is transmitted from one infected person to another by sex. Now this can be oral sex, vaginal sex or anal sex. Chlamydia can also be passed on to a newborn during childbirth and this is called neonatal chlamydia and it can cause things like eye infections and lung infections and even death. The other way is by direct contact. It is said that the bacterium live for like a few seconds up to a minute on a surface. However, an infected part of the body can come in contact with direct contact like the eyes and you can get infected that way. So if you have a vagina, then these are the signs and symptoms that you need to be aware of. Burning or pain when urinating, pain or bleeding after sex, unusual bleeding or spotting between periods, pain in your lower belly. 
Now if these signs uh, or if this is left untreated in females it can cause things like infertility, it can cause pelvic inflammatory disease and a chronic pelvic pain. Remembering that something like 70% of people can be asymptomatic meaning showing no symptoms. Now if you have a penis then these are the signs and symptoms for you. Unusual discharge from your penis, pain when urinating, swollen and sore testicles and if unless treated in males it can cause infertility. In fact in a study of 18 participants 16 had tissue from their testicles um, taken and tested and it actually tested positive for uh, chlamydia bacterium. So that male had been in contact with chlamydia and did not even know it uh, nor had he had symptoms so um, and that can lead to infertility and that is maybe uh, undiagnosed or a reason why um, there's infertility in men as you know as well no other cause for infertility but once you scrape um, some cells from their testicles they show that they've come into contact with chlamydia that's what one research study showed um, and that was in Queensland yay Australia um, and then of course so we've got that and then we've got uh, in contact with things like our eye involvement so it can go through the bloodstream and cause conjunctivitis uh, where it irritates the conjunctiva of the eye and causes conjunctivitis and if left untreated it actually causes opacity and it covers over the iris of the eye and, calls, and it is called trachoma and it causes blindness in developing countries. So I'll put a little picture of that here um, and it's the one most treatable cause that is one of the most preventable causes in a developing country of blindness. Now the other place chlamydia can affect is the joints. It causes inflammation and swelling around the joints which means you can't move as well and it can cause reactive arthritis. These three things together, pain when um, weighing or peeing, um, pains in your joints uh, and also not being able to see is called writer's, syn um, writer's syndrome called R-E-I-T-E-R-S syndrome and that is a combination of three things together which virtually means that you can't see, you can't pee and you can't climb a tree because you've got sore joints and reactive arthritis. So it's not a, usually caused by the bacterium um, chlamydia. Uh, there is one other bacteria that can cause this particular disease but it's generally related to a chlamydial infection. So what are the tests? So you should be tested if you are 25 years old and younger and are sexually active or changing, uh, having multiple sexual partners or changing partners. Uh, most infections are asymptomatic meaning there's no symptoms so it's a good idea to be tested either on a change of a partner or annually. So yearly when you have your checkup, have uh, chlamydia test or a STI check is a good thing. So what uh, what is the actual test? How do you do it? Well it's just a urine test or a cotton swab of an area. Very easy, not so hard to do. Uh, the treatment is the prescription of an antibiotic for the person who's infected and of course for the persons who they've been in contact with sexually. So if you've had a partner or multiple partners they need to be notified that you have tested positive for chlamydia. They need to go and get seen by their doctor and they need to get antibiotics um, as well. So they all need to be treated. You can see how a lot of different people can become infected and they may not show signs and then they're sexually active and they're infecting other people as well. So it all becomes a very large circle of people who are infected with chlamydia. It's advised that after your initial test that you actually have another test in three months just to make sure that everything is clear and then of course yearly after that. Prevention, how do we prevent chlamydia? 
Well, the easy thing is to not have sex. Abstinence. If you don't have a partner, you're not in a relationship which is loving and abstinence. But if that's not your thing, then I guess having protection for yourself and for other people. So to stop transmission from one person to another, using a condom reduces direct contact. If you're having oral sex, things like dental dams, which protect your oropharynx. Um, and then of course, all pregnant women should be screened for chlamydia to prevent um, early child, um, early labor for them that they can go to, through or for their newborn baby who can be infected with chlamydia and have complications. And of course, regular checkups with your doctor or a sexual health clinic uh, to keep, the, keep, keep an eye on you and make sure that you're um, healthy in every other way as well as sexually as well. So we have to look after our bits. We need to be smart. We need to think. We need to say no if we know that we're not protected. And definitely, if you know somebody who would benefit from this video, definitely share it, um, subscribe, and look at my other clips as well. And that's it for me this week.